Hey guys, um, let's go over some photosynthesis. Yeah. Alright, so um, here you can see a thylakoid compartment. Hopefully, you can see a thylakoid compartment. Um, the thylakoid compartment would be this area in here with all the H pluses. Um, Alright, so, I mean, let's cross the H plus um, bridge when we come to it. Starting starting actually with the high H2O splitting enzyme, which I have drawn on the um, photosystem 2 here. What you get is you get you get H2O, um, you know, coming in from wherever, uh, probably gap junction somewhere. I have no idea. Anywhere, um, that H2O splitting enzyme splits that up into H plus, O2, and an electron. Um, Photosystem two is a uh, protein that has that, that that is able to um, lose electrons by means of of light coming in. Um, so in other words, a light photon comes in strikes sort of these one of these light sensitive molecules so an electron is ejected that electron is passed on to photosystem 1 and then from there that that uh that electron is used to synthesize um NADPH um all right now so kind of sort of backtracking so that means that if that electron is, is ejected from photosystem 2 here to go to photosystem 1 in there um though you'll eventually sort of reach like a Ir irreplaceable deficit of electrons if it weren't for the H2O splitting enzyme. So the, the, the water splitting enzyme there, um, it splits water and then donates those electrons to the photosystem 2 and that fills the electron gap in photosystem 2 and that's why photosystem 2 can then pass the electrons down into those other proteins like photosystem 1 and then the proteins that ultimately synthesize an ADPH. Um, now that also generates um, an H plus gradient which if you remember the electron transport chain, you'll remember that really well as, as something that enables you to synthesize um, ATP. Now, you can see sort of the H plus buildup in here from the water splitting enzyme, and th that H those H pluses actually rush through ATP synthase and um, synthesize um, ATP. In other words, we have two products that are formed simultaneously, and both are highly useful. Um, we have you can see NADPH here and ATP here. Now, I have arrows drawn going out here off the page, and then coming back as ADP on page and going out as an ADPH off the page and coming back as an ADP back onto the page. What I mean by that is here you have your light dependent reactions. Light dependent because pho photons have to strike pho um, photosystem 2 and photosystem 1 in order to um, in order for anything to happen effectively. But here we have the Calvin cycle um, and that's where those um, NADPHs and ATPs go. And what happens in there is, let me get up here real quick. You start with CO2, which comes, as, you, as you'll remember, through the stomata um, in, the, in the cell, in, in the leaf, um, and then all the way into the thylakoids here. And um, that CO2 is fixed with uh, ribulose phosphate by Rubisco, which is that very, very important enzyme, the enzyme that's, um, the so-called enzyme that feeds the world. And uh, I think that that enzyme refers to uh, ribulose... 1,5-bisphosphate mm, carboxylase oxygenase and um, it's, it's a very interesting enzyme for, for many reasons that we went over. One, it's, it's uh, catalytic, uh, it's, it's enzyme affinity is, well sorry, it's affinity to its substrate is very low um, even though you'd expect it to be high granted its importance and its central role it's actually a very very slow enzyme and um, other, other reasons are uh, it, it has a sort of a tenuous role with global warming because as, as temperatures get higher, Rubisco tends to favor um, oxygen fixation rather than carbon fixation. But as we see right here, um, CO2 has to be what's fixed in order for photosynthesis to occur. So um, anyway, without further ado, getting into the, uh, the carbon cycle, you get a one carbon CO2 here, obviously one carbon, and then a five carbon ribulose phosphate. The six refers to how many of them there are, not how many carbons there are. And that's um, made into six six carbon intermediates. We didn't go over the name of that. And then um, those are actually split into three phosphoglycerate. Now, you remember you may remember that from um, step seven of glycolysis. And I want you I want to watch oh, sorry, I want you to watch what's going on here. You have your three phosphoglycerate and that's um, made into one three bisphosphate glycerate. Now, you may remember that this step happens in reverse in glycolysis, and that should be no surprise because as we know um, the Calvin cycle is fundamentally synthetic. You're making glucose, whereas the uh, the process of glucose is, you know, degradative. Um, so y you'd kind of see why they can happen opposite to each other. 
And also, here you have just 3-phosphoglycerate, and here you have 1,3-phosphate bis, sorry, bisphosphate glycerate, meaning two phosphates here. So actually, you're going to lose 12 ATP in this step. And those ATP are the things that I, sorry, those are the same ATP that I told you were coming in here from the late dependent reactions. Um, to here in the Calvin cycle, which is light independent. So anyway, you have your 1,3 bisphosphate glycerate here, and you, you require reducing power, which is when you use the other substrate from the light dependent reactions, the NADPH, and that's formed into glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate. Um, now you may remember also that glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate is again, um, a, that, that's still the opposite direction of glycolysis, which is going to have um, glyceraldehyde phosphate coming first and then being made into 1,3 bisphosphate glycerate and then being made. So it's, it's, I guess what I'm trying to say is it's the opposite from here all the way up to here. Um, so it's in a way easy to remember. So once you get your glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, that gets made in glucose here and then six 5-carbon um, ribulose phosphate molecules. And then you require six more NADPH up here to go back to six ribulose, sorry, that should be bisphosphate, six ribulose bisphosphate right here and then um, you can start the Calvin cycle over using that. So anyway, um, objectives of this video are one, to explain light dependent, which are these, and light independent, which are these reactions, and two, to explain how they're related. Um, now, you may remember that plants are eukaryotic and they have mitochondria, so they can form 34 to 38 ATP from every glucose molecule, um, just like we can, just like animal cells can. And I think that's really where you see like the beauty of photosynthesis because, as you can see from the Calvin cycle here, how many do you require? 18. You, you require 18 ATP and you know 12 NADPH, but you get those for free from sunlight anyway, effectively. And then you use that. You can transport that glucose to do whatever you want with. I mean, plants require a lot of cellulose, which is just strings of glucose. But you can also just transport that glucose to your mitochondria and get 38 out of it. So you know it requires 18, but then you synthesize 38. Um, and it's no wonder why plants rule the world.